Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Siamese XML. It's basically how do you use Siamese networks to do extreme classification, uh, uh, you know, with 100 million labels. OK, so let's get started. How is Siamese XML trained? OK, and before we get into that, a few notations. So L is the number of labels, V is vocabulary size. There are n turning points denoted as XI, YI, where YI could be minus one or plus one. Um, and um, essentially, uh, there are capital L number of labels. So for each label, uh, there is also label text. So Siamese XML also makes use of the uh, label metadata or the label uh, or the text associated with the labels. Okay. The overall goal is to learn the final classifiers W uh, while also learning embedding parameters theta. Okay. So uh, well, embedding parameters, uh, Siamese XML sort of follows typical previous deep XML kind of techniques where uh, um, essentially, when you have a document X, you first, um, you know, you first basically use uh, its uh, sparse TF-IDF vector representation as the input representation. You multiply that with uh, an embedding matrix E, so as to basically get E into X, and then you essentially apply uh, GELU, the activation, uh, you know, um, the activation function, and then normalization, also indicated by this N kind of a shape, right? So that gives you, um, is, is that gives you an intermediate embedding representation FEX, um, and then you take that and also, you know, uh, take take FE. Uh, and uh, also pass it. Uh, so, so uh, further, what you do with F e, uh, with with this F, you know, the representation F is to basically um, create a residual connection around it. So basically, you have F, and you also pass it to um, a matrix uh, or multiply it with a residual matrix R. Uh, apply uh, GLU activation, the GLU activation function, and then add the two, normalize it so as to overall get an embedding for X. Okay. So that's that. So that's the text embedding block in Siamese XML. Essentially, you take the text and uh, you know um, TFIDF sparse vector representation of the text, and uh, uh, you do pretty much similar kind of operations as you as you do in other kinds of deep XML algorithms like STEC, Eclair, or uh, DCAF, and so on. And uh, essentially, you get the embedding representation for the for the for the text. Okay? You do the same for label text as well as for the um, for the for the document text. Uh, of course, you learn different parameters are for the two. Okay, so in fact, this is uh, where basically uh, you know you see different words except for the stop words being used, so as to essentially obtain e of x i, and then finally use the embedding block, this blue block, so as to get the overall uh, embedding representation x i hat. Okay. So that's that. So uh, so in uh, Siamese XML, the module one essentially does this. It basically tries to learn these th this theta hat zero, which is essentially, uh, uh, which is essentially um, you know uh, the 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 embedding uh, matrix E and the uh, and the residual matrix R. Okay. And uh, therefore, overall, it learns uh, it learns this embedding block uh, you know, embedding block uh, uh, which is parameterized with theta. OK, so to be able to learn this, it does not really use any kind of meta XML algorithm, meta XML problem or, or anything like that. It basically just solves the XML problem uh, by using in batch negative mining. So, um, so you know, typically in batch negative mining is sort of bad for XE kind of problems because if you are just doing random sampling for negatives based on the current batch, you end up uh, sampling, um, you know, uh, head labels a lot because they occur in several examples even within the batch. So thus, in batch uh, negative mining of, uh, uh, you know, ne random negative mining sort of leads to a neglect a negligence or you know you, you end up neglecting the real labels. Okay. So therefore, Simon's XML brought in a very interesting concept. It's basically label side batching. So they form batches out of labels. Um, so, which basically means that uh, uh, you know, um, essentially, a single batch typically contains one label uh, or a few labels, and then you essentially randomly mine the negative documents. So, of course, every data point basically consists of documents and labels. So, if there is only one label in the entire batch, all you can do is to mine um, random documents. Okay, so negative documents. So. Um, and uh, that negative documents essentially. Um, uh, so, so this one basically means that you do not, uh, um, you know, it does not neglect any rare labels because, well, all the uh, or several examples of the same label are already present in the same batch. Okay. So, 
Now to represent labels, they do something fancy. They basically make use of two label representations. So one of the label representation is exactly this. I mean, exactly using uh, uh, an embedding block, uh, the text embedding block, as you see here. The other embedding label is essentially obtained using uh, this kind of a representation. So what do you do here? Well, you essentially consider uh, all of those uh, uh, all of those data points where the label L is relevant. OK, so RL is set of all of those data points where label L is relevant. OK, and then you compute an average intermediate embedding representation uh, of those, um, you know, of those uh, 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 of those of those labels. Okay, so of of, the, of those data points, right? So essentially, um, you have this Fe of x. This is basically what you do. You take the average of those, and then you do normalization, and that gives you Vl, which is basically another representation for label L. Okay, so essentially, you have two label representations. One is, uh, um, you know, one is uh, uh, this um, embedding block-based representation. The other is this. Uh, uh, VL representation, which is uh, based on the intermediate representations of the data points relevant to uh, where, where this label is relevant. Okay, so that is that. Uh, now, as I mentioned, um, now, now the way these uh, embeddings are trained is by optimizing the negative log likelihood, as you see here. Okay, so I, typically you would just optimize the negative log likelihood this part, but then here, since you are using two different label representations, you uh, optimize or you minimize uh, two different uh, negative log likelihoods. Okay. So uh, beta is the weighing factor between the two different log likelihoods. Now L is the total number of labels that you have. So of course you have to run it over all the labels, but also you care about negative mind uh, uh, examples. So that's basically your, uh, so, so SLB basically stands for the positive examples, positive labels, as well as the negative mind labels that you have. Now, overall, you might have uh, mined some, uh, you know, uh, some kappa kind of label. So therefore, you have kappa negative labels and one positive label, uh, which is what you essentially compute the overall likelihood for. Now, the likelihood is computed in a Siamese manner, and that is why Siamese XML. So essentially, uh, as you see, the likelihood com computed using this P uh, function. So P function essentially has like it's it's uh, subscripted with L. So essentially, the way this uh, P L is defined is that if this is a positive label, uh, and uh, whatever the similarity between the embeddings of the label and the data point, you uh, you know let's call that similarity as v. And uh, remember, this v has to do nothing with this v. Okay, so th these v's are actually not related to each other. But uh, anyway, I mean uh, the way this function is defined is that you essentially just do c times. I mean basically compute this factor. So here C and D are constants, and uh, this sort of control, um, um, this the, the sort of control um, the aggressiveness of or the overall aggressiveness of of the uh, Siamese loss, right? So, uh, so that's that. So essentially, um, now this is how the positive label uh, probability is defined for the positive label. Uh, similarly, you can define the probability for the negative label label by just doing one minus probability of the positive label. Okay. So that's post, uh, that's module one. Module one, what does it give you? Well, it basically gives you the uh, the initial embedding parameters, uh, E and R, okay? E and R. So E basically for the embedding and R, uh, you know, the initial embedding and R for this uh, uh, residual matrix, okay? Now what happens in module two? You, you, you see module two basically starts uh, with uh, these uh, theta zero, which have been, uh, you know, already learned in module one. Now further, um, essentially, in module two, the idea is to basically learn a shortlister, basically a way of uh, uh, sampling negative labels. So the way it does is to first compute a third representation for the labels. We already talked about two representations for the labels, right? I mean, we've already talked about, uh, you know, an embedding based representation for the labels uh, and also VL representation for the label. Um, Siamese XML in module two essentially computes a third representation for the label, basically by using the E, which has been trained using uh, uh, using using module one. Okay, so it basically computes the F representation of the label and then multiply it with MLM. Now, what is MLM? MLM is the label correlation matrix that was learned in Eclair. So, if you look at Eclair, Eclair basically uses label correlation graph. Um, you know, uh, and and then uh, uh, tries to do several things, but we take the same label correlation matrix from there and essentially use it to come up with revised representations for each label or a ZL tilde representations for each label. So overall, we have three different representations for each label, and we sort of use them so as to create uh, three different approximate nearest neighbor search uh, uh, indexes so that we can do negative mining using these three indexes. Okay, 
So the first one is basically based on this recently computed representation. The second one is based on BL, which we basically talked about on the previous slide. The third one is actually based on uh, F itself, the, the intermediate uh, embeddings for the uh, for the data points F uh, uh, of XI. OK, so once you have these representations, uh, uh, essentially um, um, uh, at train time for every data point, you're basically going to sample 500 negative labels from these three indexes. Um, and uh, that's basically your shortlist. So you call that as your shortlist SI. OK. Uh, in module three, what do you do? So, so far we have not talked about the overall final uh, classifiers. So module three brings in the classifiers and initializes them. So module three basically says that, hey, let me actually initialize the classifier with the ZL tilde that we just computed here, plus uh, 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 free vectors or sort of uh, uh, refinement vectors per label, okay, refinement vectors per label. So these refinement vectors are actually randomly initialized and uh, trained in module four, okay? So as you see, um, uh, so what module three does is essentially uh, for every label, you take the representations, you multiply with E, um, and uh, that gives you, and, and then apply the embedding block. So that basically gives you, uh, uh, you know, uh, that, that basically gives you a ZL tilde, and you add these refinement vectors to a normalization, and that gives you your WL. So that's basically your initialization for WL. Um, now remember embeddings from module one are frozen. So basically module four just uses those embeddings, but it jointly trains refinement vectors NL and also R. Okay. So this R is going to be updated in module four. Uh, and it also fine tunes, uh, of course, it trains, it trains NL, which is basically randomly initialized. Okay. So uh, module four, of course, the, uh, you know, trains on positive labels and those labels coming from the shortlist. Shortlist as uh, obtained, uh, shortlist of negative labels as obtained from these three approximate nearest neighbor search indexes. Okay. Um, so that's that. It used the same negative log likelihood formulation, um, essentially, um, except that uh, uh, it just uses one label represent, uh, you know, one one representation uh, of the labels. Uh, that is basically the classifier that it wants to train. Okay. Um, now this is actually pretty expensive to compute, and therefore they also propose an asynchronous distributed training across GPUs, uh, uh, somehow ensuring that uh, the communication between GPUs is as minimum as possible. Okay. Now is in how is inference done in Siamese XML? So inference is uh, done as follows: when a new data point comes in, a new test point comes in, it's a document X. You extract the intermediate embedding F and also the overall embedding a a E. Right, using the embedding block. Now uh, you use these kinds of embeddings so as to essentially shortlist uh, O of log L most relevant labels using the three approximate nearest neighbor indexes of module two. And uh, once you basically get that, you evaluate using the one versus all classifiers and get a score using this formula. So in, you know the, the score is computed in two parts and weighed using alpha. The first part is obvious. It basically tries to figure out uh, how much uh, you know a particular label, uh, how much how much this data point uh, or how much a particular label is relevant to this data point using the label classifiers. The second part essentially makes use of uh, the class uh, make, makes use of the label scores as are obtained um, from uh, uh, from the approximate nearest neighbor search indexes. Okay. So overall inference basically is super fast in Siamese XML, just takes about 12 milliseconds on a CPU, even on a data set with 100 million labels. So that's basically pretty scalable for all kinds of uh, large scale production systems. How does Siamese XML perform? Well, here are results on Amazon 131K and WikiC also 320K uh, data sets uh, in terms of PSP at one, uh, PSP at K and P, uh, precision at K, right? So what do you observe? It sort of says, and, and you know, the training time is also provided here. So you observe that uh, Siamese XML can be two to 13% more accurate than several previous state-of-the-art deep learning based algorithms in terms of pre, you know, in terms of several metrics, PSP as well as precision. It can also be up to two to 68 times faster at training compared to DCAF, Eclair, and X Transformer. So uh, you know, the folks also deployed it on Bing and A-B test sort of showed significant uh, coverage, significant gains in terms of click-through rates. So this was for uh, ads, so uh, advertisement systems, query to bitface detection and so on, uh, uh, query to bitface classification. And uh, folks found that uh, significant gains in terms of click-through rates, coverage, revenue, and other online metrics. Okay, so in summary, in this video, I talked about Siamese XML. It basically follows the Siamese architecture and also it follows a deep XML uh, pipeline. It uses uh, um, uh, two label representations, but then yes, uh, a third one as well, 
um, a third one as well as defined uh, using uh, label correlation matrix. So in some ways it uses label metadata, label correlations as well, um, and uh, uh, then combines it nicely with Sami's architecture using three different approximate nearest neighbor search mechanism uh, indexes so as to build a pretty scalable large scale system. It has been shown to uh, give 2 to 3 to 13% more accurate results compared to state of the art deep learning extreme classification algorithms and is also uh, 2 to 68x faster at training. That's it for this video. Hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.